Let's consider the idea of rolling a fair die 10 times. Uh, because it has six sides, we'd expect any one of these numbers to come up an equal number of times. Watch the numbers that are coming up here as we roll this die uh, 10 times, and we'll just compare some of the things that are happening there. So there we've got a 2, another 2, a 1, a 5, and a 3. Now in that 10 rolls, we got a 1, 6, 2, 5, 4, 2, 2, 1, 5, uh, 3. Okay, let's run the experiment again, and, and you count and watch what numbers show up. There'll be different numbers, of course. Okay, watch the numbers that uh, show up this time. Okay, six sides. Uh, we get a six, a five, three, two, four, five, four, one, three, another one. Okay, we've got it. So in our second trial, we got a six, five, three, two, four, five, four, one, three, one. Now we can simulate this idea of rolling the die uh, <clears throat> in R in the following way. Let's build the, the code for that. There's a command in R called sample. In sample, you tell it what you're going to sample from. We're going to sample from a vector that contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'm using the concatenate uh, function here to, uh, to build this vector. Then you tell it how many things you're going to sample. And we need to tell it that replace is equal to true. By default, sample uses replace equals false. And uh, what we mean here is that we, each time that we sample these 10 samples, we'll always pick from, from all of the numbers, rather than once something is, is picked, we ignore that, that number. Okay, so let's run that code. And when that command in R is run, then this time we got a 451416, uh, so on, which is different than the results that we uh, got when we were rolling. And of course, each time we run this, uh, let's run the code again, we get a different set of numbers, of, of course, it's simulating that idea of rolling the die uh, 10 times. So let's say that we were interested in counting the probability of getting any particular one of these numbers. Let's say we choose the number 6. Then let's rewrite a script up here that will help us to, to do that counting. Here's the idea. For convenience in my script, I'm going to build something called SS for the sample space. And the kinds of things that we can get are a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So in the script, we're going to build an object called EX for um, the experiment. We're going to uh, sample from that sample space. Oh, I need to say what N is. So in my script, the first thing I'm going to do is say how many things we're going to sample in the experiment. We're going to ex sample 10, build the sample space, uh, run the experiment from the sample space. We're going to pick 10 with replacement, and then we're going to just show what that is. So let's run that. And of course, that's doing essentially what we were doing before. But now I've got the convenience that I can change that in if I choose to. OK, now let's talk through what we're telling the script to do. We're going to set n to be 10. We're going to set a sample space to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to run the experiment, which which selects a sample from uh, this sample space. It's going to choose 10 of them, and it's going to choose it with replacement. It's going to show us what we sampled. Then it's going to uh, uh, ask the question, which of those things were equal to 6? This double equal sign will tell it, will tell us to, to build a vector that says true when that's 
when the elements are six and false when that element uh, are not six and then we're going to ask it to to uh, output that those truth values let me just kind of clean this out so that we can kind of keep track of what's happening let's run that code now and you can see that we got three four one three two four three four six three so most of the time it's false except for that one time that it's true now the nice thing about R is that when it's doing these logical values if we do arithmetic on those logical values it considers false to be zero and trues to be one so if we just add that up if we sum up that vector that vector six then it will tell us how many sixes we've got so let's clean the console up a little bit so we can see the new input let's run that code and there we're getting those values in this case we got a 216 I uh, got a couple sixes there and so the EX vector has a bunch of falses but a true wherever there's a six then we add those up and it counts it up to be uh, two sixes so out of the ten we got uh, two sixes so we're getting two tenths of the time empirically uh, we're getting sixes or one-fifth of the time now let's clean this up a little bit we really don't need to necessarily see what it was that we rolled on a particular time and we don't necessarily need to see all those trues and falses so let's take that line out and also so that script we could run each time that we wanted to and and uh, and and just run the experiment again and again uh, we could could run that time and again and see we got zero that time another two a zero a one three sixes zero sixes one six and so on okay now what we'd like to do though is compare what happens as this n gets larger we would expect because of the rule of uh, the law of large numbers is that as we do this more and more and more this value will get closer and closer the 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 number of sixes will end up being one sixth of the number of rolls that are done so let's build a script that will help us uh, compare that information now let's examine this script a little bit the syntax for a for next loop is this you say for n is going to be the the counter here and as long as n is in 10 50 150 and and a thousand so it's going to do it for those set of numbers it's going to do whatever's in this squiggly brackets so it starts out with n is equal to 10 then it uh, runs that experiment samples from 10 it finds out how many sixes uh, it finds out uh, which ones are sixes it uh, counts up those number of sixes and then it's going to print a vector we're using the concatenate uh, concatenate uh, function again it's going to tell us how many we selected from the number of sixes and the number of sixes divided by n what what the probability is of getting that number of sixes and then of course the squiggly bracket ends that do loop uh, so that's uh, what we're going to run let's uh, clear some space here and and uh, run this a few times so there we're running that code let me make this more readable so when we uh, selected 10 we got about a, a 20 percent uh, 50 we got a 26 percent and this number right here you'll notice each time we run that as the as the number of of rolls that we make increases this number gets closer and closer to one-sixth just notice what uh, one-sixth is we can do that calculation right here so that we know what we're aiming at uh, 1.66 uh, repeating 
So let's run that code. 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 That's the rule of of law numbers uh, of large numbers. Is that as this n gets bigger and bigger, this is going to get closer and closer to uh, uh, the uh, theoretical probability. Okay.